En nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. We need to understand that the covenant that the Lord has made with David is also made with us as Christians. Now God doesn't break his covenant with us, but he may have to afflict us in order to bring us back to the right way again whenever we leave the path that he has marked out for us. And like a true father, he wants the best for his children. And like the prodigal son, he wants and he waits for us to come to our senses. The word Midianite means confusion, contention and division. And there's an awful lot of confusion today. There's an awful lot of contention and an awful lot of division within the church. We read that the Israelites did what was displeasing to the Lord and he gave them over for seven years into the hands of the Midianites. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not reverence the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live, but you have not listened to my words. Now the word of God says, do not be conformed to this world, because when you do, you take on the characteristics of those you are in conformity with. Here we find an incident where the Lord allowed the Midianites to come upon the people for a period of seven years. The purpose was not to harm them or to destroy them, but to bring them into a place of freedom. It was disobedience against the Lord's ways that brought all their distress. Eventually, the angel of the Lord came to a young man of the tribe of Manasseh called Gideon. And he told Gideon that the Lord would be with him, that he would crush Midian as though it were a single man. Now here you have Gideon. He was bound by fear. Why did they worship idols? Because fear causes one to worship an idol. He received this fear from his father, who was an idol worshipper. He was crouching in fear, threshing wheat inside the wine press, because the Midianites would overrun the land with their livestock, eat up all the produce of the land, leaving the Israelites nothing. And this brought great distress. The Lord told Gideon to pull down the altar to Baal that belonged to his father and to cut down the sacred post at the side of it, and then to take his father's second bullock of seven years, and to sacrifice it to the Lord. Why the second bullock, and not the first bullock? Because in scripture, a bullock represents a servant, and four times in the book of Isaiah, it speaks of my servant, Jesus is the bullock. The first servant Adam became a living soul but he was powerless and the second Adam the Lord Jesus Christ became a life-giving spirit. It's interesting to note that Gideon was of the half tribe of Manasseh. One half of the tribe stopped in the wilderness. They didn't cross over the Jordan. But the other half stayed in the land of Canaan and Gideon was threshing the wheat. This represents the purging or the refining that goes on through the word of God. The word of God says he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. There has to be a sweeping and a cleansing of that which will contaminate the word. Sometimes you get a lot of dross that is mixed with the word of God. And just because something may be traditional, it doesn't necessarily mean that it 
lines up with the word of God. Remember that this spirit brings confusion. And confusion is a mixture of two words. It's a mixture of truth and error in your thinking. There's a lot of mixture being preached to the word of God today. Uh, sometimes traditions can be man's interpretation of the word and not the Holy Spirit's interpretation. So here you have Gideon and he's threshing. That is, he is separating the husk from the grain. And that's what the Holy Spirit has got to do with us. He may have to use pressure or adversity so that we can get rid of the husks away from the word. Gideon was sitting in the wine press which speaks of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. So this tells us that in order to rightly divide the word of truth we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So here you have this young man he's still confused because he can't understand why God has allowed all this trouble to happen to them. He can't understand why God has made a promise to them. Now it seems to be backfiring. It can be a big problem for us. If we don't understand why things happen to us, or if we don't know why the Lord allows certain things to happen to us, then it can bring great confusion. Because we may not know his purposes or his ways. If you take Job as an example, the Lord said that Job was a righteous man. And Job asked this question, If I am guilty, woe to me. If I am innocent, I cannot lift my head. I am full of confusion. So Job is asking why the righteous suffer. How is it that if I am righteous, I have lost all my possessions and my family? And his friends come along and say that he must have sinned because of all this that is happening to him. (laughs) So Job is very confused. Why? Because there's a mixture of truth and error somewhere in his thinking. The whole purpose of the testing of Job was can a man love God and still retain the integrity of his lips even though everything is adverse against him? So do we love God for what he does for us and what he gives us? Or do we love him just for himself? That's the test. And if we don't understand how God allows and works through adverse circumstances in our life, then this spirit of the Midianite will confuse us with thoughts like, how could God allow this? Why is this happening? This spirit is treacherous in that it also seeks to divide. In this incident at Peor, we are told that Israel settled at Shittim. Now the word Shittim means that turns away. And it also speaks of the flesh. And this is what happens whenever we turn away from walking in the spirit. The enemy seeks to harass us so that we will turn away from seeking after the things of the spirit causing us to lose our zeal for God. When Jesus cleansed the temple, the disciples remembered the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will devour me. Now these scriptures tell us that a priest without zeal for the Father's house is a contradiction. Why do you think that there is so much division and disharmony in the church today? Some are walking away Some are walking in the spirit. Others are walking in the flesh. Some are sitting on one side of the fence. Others are sitting on the other side of the fence. But when the power of the Holy Ghost comes and hits that fence, (laughs) 
there will be no sitting on it for you will either find yourself either on one side or the other now this spirit of the midday night also causes contention as St Paul says to Timothy a servant of the Lord is not to engage in quarrels but has to be kind to everyone a good teacher and patient he has to be gentle when he corrects people who dispute what he says never forgetting that God may give them a change of mind so that they can recognize the truth and come to their senses out of the trap where the devil caught them and kept them enslaved here Paul is telling us that people who are in strife and opposition to one another allow the devil free access to block the power of God from operating in their lives this enemy will use our lack of understanding of God's ways to bring us into confusion this enemy will then use our confusion to get us to question God's ways and to get us to question the truth of what the word of God teaches us this enemy will then cause us to contend with one another as Paul says with pointless philosophical discussions that only lead further and further away from true religion this is what causes strife and division that is the whole purpose of this enemy to keep us so caught up majoring on the minors so that we minor on the majors now God is not a God of confusion but of peace and wherever you find jealousy and ambition you find disharmony confusion and wicked things of every kind being done I'll leave it there Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto Sic erit in principio et nunc et semper et in secula secalorum Amen.